All right, and this is the Kurt Cobain Road Ward Road Worn Jaguar. <laughs> A little bit of an issue with that, but uh, as you can see, it is completely relicked, supposedly exactly the same way that Kurt Cobain's one was. I haven't had access to his, so I can't tell you. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is that I've seen maybe three or four of these in store, and uh, they've all been worn exactly, exactly the same. Uh, there's dents, like, even in the finish on the back of the neck, where supposedly his were. Um, the lacquer is cracked and spiderwebbed. I don't know if you can see that super well. It's easier to see in person, but the lacquer is, like, cracked and spiderwebbed all over the place. Mm. Uh, it's got the same setup as his had, so the three knobs, uh, three-way switch instead of, uh, the three switches. Uh, Two or three switches, I don't remember, on the normal Jaguar, but you still have the circuit up here. Uh, honestly, usually I use this, I'll, I'll show you, it sounds different, but I usually just use this as like a cutoff. Because you've got a separate volume and tone here, so I just turn off the volume and just use that as a cut. Um, yeah, so this is the Made in Mexico Kurt Cobain Road Worn Jaguar. It has the bound neck. Uh, the two DiMarzio pickups, I forget the exact model to be honest, but it's the same ones that Kurt had in his. Um, a uh, Tone Pro bridge instead of the normal Jaguar one. And uh, then just the Jaguar hardware, which I keep locked again, because I'm never going to use the Tremolo on this thing, and neither did Cobain. Um, I think it's double volumes and then one master tone. I could be wrong. I haven't played this thing in a while, to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah, there you go. So it's a uh, volume, volume. Uh, so neck volume, bridge volume, and then master tone. Uh, with the three-way switch. Uh, now, a lot of people have complained that the knobs here are a little bit too close together, so it makes it hard it's not, I'll, I'll admit, it's not the most comfortable thing, but how often are you really playing around with um, the volumes? Uh, I kind of wish this top one would have been for the bridge to make it easier to roll off quickly, but like I say, I just use the separate circuit up here to, as my cutoff. Um, so yeah, sounds nice enough. middle, and then full neck, and then this top circuit is again full neck, but the circuit's wired a bit differently, so you'll see in a second it sounds a little bit different. So this is full volume, full tone, same as the bottom circuit, again bottom circuit, then if we switch up here to this circuit, so it's a little bit more mellowed out. It's just a little bit different. It's not a massive change, but it's just that little bit different. See again, like go back. The bottom one is a bit more clear and ringy, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, but yeah, so um, this thing, I believe I paid like a thousand two Canadian for it, whereas the Mustang was uh, about 900. This came with a hard case, uh, a book of uh, just the history of Kurt Cobain's Jaguar. Um, the Mustang came with the Mustang and a cardboard box, that was it. Um, is this really worth more than... Honestly, if I had to do it again, I'd probably still buy both just because I'm a huge Nirvana fan, as you can tell by the poster behind me. Um, I grew up in the uh, early 90s watching Cobain play this thing and play the, uh, the Mustang, and I've wanted one ever since. So My birthday came around when they reissued these, because I missed the Jagstang the first time around. Uh, both of the first times around, the original run I missed, uh, and then the when they republished, republished, you republished guitars, you know what I mean, they reissued the guitars. Um, 
they were getting not great reviews and I kind of dawdled on it and I just never ended up picking one up and I always regretted it. So when these came out the year, uh, both of them came out. I bought this for my birthday first and uh, then I went and got the Mustang when I came into a bit of money uh, afterwards. And uh, if you're on a budget and you are a huge Nirvana fan like I am and you only want one, go for the Mustang, to be honest, save, uh, save a good like $300 if not more. Mustang's just more solid, it's better quality. Uh, I said on the Mustang I adjusted the neck once. This thing, for the first two years I had it, every single time I picked it up, I'd go to play, it was horribly out of tune. I'd tune it up and then I'd notice like fret buzz or just the neck was warped every single time I'd pick it up. So like every time, you know, you're in the mood, you want to play guitar, so it's like, oh, I'm going to pick up my Jaguar and I'm going to play some Nirvana. You'd pick it up and, oh, no, it's completely out of tune. Well, oh, Christ. And this is the same thing as the Jaguar. If you want to adjust the neck to uh, adjust the truss rod, uh, you have to remove the plate on the back. Take the neck off, adjust, assume you're hopefully correct, put it all back on, uh, retune, and then hope for the best. And if you're off, start all over again. Um, to the point where this thing, I ended up having to take the neck off manually bow it and then torque the uh, truss rod which if you don't know what you're doing I don't recommend even trying um, I've been working on my own guitars for pff, almost 20 years now um, I like to know, I like to think I know what I'm doing so uh, it's not a normal thing uh, if you ever notice that you can't uh, adjust the thrust rod anymore bring it to a luthier, bring it to a uh, Fender uh, authorized repair. Don't try and do it on your own unless you know what you're doing. But yeah, uh, twice I've had to manually back bow the neck so I would be able to adjust the truss rod because it just wouldn't go anymore. Um, I finally got tired of it, contacted Fender and they sent me to um, one of the repair shops. And But before I went, I figured Screw it, I'll give it one last try, you know? Because what they would have done is literally taken the neck off, sent off for another neck and replaced it. Um, you know, take your chances. Um, but yeah, I adjusted it one last time myself, and don't ask me why, but since then it has been pretty stable. It only took two years. Um, so just my opinion, but stay away from Mexican-made uh, fenders. They're, it's just not worth it. Um, the other thing too is the fret job on this. You can feel every single fret. It's not the worst job I've ever seen, but for something that you're paying $1,200 for, it's really disappointing. They're quite sharp if you're going quickly, you know. Um, the tuners are actually Gotho tuners. They're decent. They get the job done. It's nothing to write home about. I'm not a huge fan of the DiMarzios, but uh, yeah. So we'll just play a couple of riffs and uh, that'll be that. Mm -hmm. 